Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The field is set for the upcoming by-election in Lloydminster. We spoke to the returning officer for the by-election to get the details. I'm here talking with the returning officer for the city of Lloydminster, and we're talking about the upcoming by-election. Uh, the nomination papers are all in now, and uh, I'm wondering if you can fill me in on uh, what we're going to be looking at uh, for a field. Well, absolutely, and, and um, I, I can't really speak to the individual candidates, um, but I can speak to the process and, of course, the, uh, the election itself. Um, we have a by-election with uh, eight candidates looking to fill um, one councillor seat. Um, and I can speak to the advance poll will be on Saturday, February 3rd, starting at 9 a.m. and closing at 3 p.m. And it will be at City Hall. And then on Election Day, which is February 13th, uh, um, the, the poll will be at City Hall from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., um, after which we will conduct a hand count. And um, once that is complete, we will uh, um, unofficially declare a winner um, after a 24-hour period, then the, the, the official um, I'll declare the uh, winner officially. Um, can you speak at all to uh, the number of nominations? Is that uh, normal for a by-election? Well, this being my first by-election, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. We had a, a, a strong field of candidates uh, in the last election. Um, I think that uh, eight is a, is a great opportunity for people to look at the different candidates, uh, become familiar with the um, with their 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 stances on different issues, and uh, so it's a it's a great opportunity for people to be engaged and and look at uh, what the candidates have to offer, and then um, select the one they want to support. Well, I guess on that uh, note, um, are by elections typically well um, responded to? Do people turn out to vote a lot in those? Unfortunately, as as you know, as a reporter, and as as we've seen trending. Um, um, participation in elections has um, not been as strong as we'd like to see. Um, we recognize in by-elections because uh, there's a lower voter turnout. We, we encourage everybody to become involved. We encourage everybody to um, learn about the candidates. And, and we do encourage everybody to take the time to vote. It only takes a few minutes. Um, we've got a couple opportunities for them on a Saturday on the on the third and once again all day on the 13th um, so yes unfortunately there is a usually a lower voter turnout but we do encourage um, and strongly hope that people will take uh, the opportunity after all this is um, this affects their their homes and their residents absolutely all right well thank you so much for your time today uh, those are my only questions and i'm sure we'll be talking again as the by-election uh, draws closer and of course afterwards. So thank you very much for your time today. No, no, thank you very much for uh, having me on. Abby St. John joins me now and we are of course talking about the deep freeze that is our weather picture and it doesn't look like it's improving anytime soon. Oh no if anything it's gotten worse. So yesterday when I said that there is an extreme cold warning in the entire province of Alberta mostly in BC as well the majority of that province Half of Sas Saskatchewan was under that cold, extreme cold warning. Today and right now, the whole province is under that warning. So BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, half of Manitoba, we're all under an extreme cold warning and it's going to be in effect, I think, for at least until the weekend, if not past that into next week. We're currently sitting at minus 31. However, with that wind chill, it feels closer to minus 40, which is something we're going to see. There is even a risk that that wind chill could reach into the 50, minus 50. So definitely be cautious if you're going outside in this weather, because even with nine kilometer per hour winds, it still feels incredibly frigid. Um, current temperatures across Alberta, very similar, very, very cold, minus 30 in Provost and in Vermilion, minus 32 in Wainwright and in Cold Lake and out in Beggarville and minus 31 in Edmonton, St. Paul, Bonneville, Lac La uh, and in Marwain, minus 30 in Provost. On the Saskatchewan side, also extremely frigid, minus 33 in Isle Cross, 
minus 31 in Pierceland and in Maidstone, minus 29 in Macklin, minus 31 in also out in Green Lake, and minus 32 in Meadow Lake and St. Walberg, and minus 30 out in North Battleford. Overnight tonight in North Battleford will drop down to minus 33. Uh, very, very cold, and there's about a 65% chance of a little bit of snow at time. Zero to one centimeter, so not a whole lot of snow. Um, but there will be a surge of that life-threatening cold air, so definitely protect yourself if you're outside today. Even tomorrow, definitely be cautious about it because it is bad everywhere. Minus 30 is your daytime high for tomorrow. North Battleford, very cold and cloudy, so definitely scarves, toques, mittens, jackets, everything. Definitely bundle yourself up uh, if you're going outside for sure. Cold Lake overnight tonight, minus 37. A uh, little bit of snow at times, about a 65% chance with little to no accumulation otherwise. So you don't really have to worry a lot about it sticking or adding to the already existing snow, uh, but it will be quite cloudy and very cold. Tomorrow, a daytime high of minus 31, cloudy and very cold. Wind, however, thankfully is only at nine kilometers per hour. And then overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will drop down to minus 36, 42% uh, chance that we could see some flurries as well. Um, otherwise, it will be very cold. Again, that surge of life-threatening cold air, we know how windy it can get here in the border city. So definitely take caution if you are outside this evening and into the next few days. Uh, to break down the day for tomorrow, 6 a.m., minus 35, 17 kilometer per hour winds. It will remain cloudy throughout the whole day. Noontime, minus 30. 33, uh, 17 kilometer per hour winds. Of course, with that wind chill, we're probably going to feel closer into the minus 40s. 6 p.m., minus 34, 13 kilometer per hour winds, and the clouds will start to dissipate at midnight and it will be minus 36. And then over the next three days, a high of minus 32 and a low of minus 38 for tomorrow. On Saturday, we at least get a little bit of sun with a high of minus 31 and a low of minus 36. And then on Sunday, a very sunny day, but don't let that deceive you. It's going to be freezing with a high of minus 27 and a low of minus 33. That's a first look at your evening weather forecast. I'll have a more in-depth look later on in the show. The Aztec Curling Challenge's first day of action is today, but last night before all the action began, the players helped give back to the Lloydminster curling community. Our Thomas Wildman has more on last night's activities. What happens if I'm here? I'm at, I'm at. Over 50 young and eager curlers were out on the ice learning from the world-class curlers competing at the Aztec Safety Challenge. Leading the charge was the presenting team Botcher, who had done a clinic here in Lloydminster last year. Kids out there were had super good attention spans. They wanted to learn. Um, they were excited. You know, Aztec did a great job putting it on, and we got a whole bunch of curlers out here. Uh, Number one, number two teams in the world doing a junior clinic doesn't happen every day. So really good props to, you know, my guys and also Retorn as his team for coming out. But yeah, we had a great time. Kids had fun. Hopefully they learned a lot. Also graciously giving their time were other teams and coaches from around the world, as well as local curlers from Lloydminster and area, allowing for an outstanding learning opportunity for these curlers. Yeah, you know, curling's a bit of a unique sport that way. So I think the access um, that everyone gets to kind of the, the top elite level of, of curling is, is pretty special. It's, it's not something you see often in a lot of other sports. So I, I think it's just great that, you know, not only my guys, but a lot of the other guys here, they, they didn't have to be here today. They wanted to be here today and, and that's pretty special. And hopefully we made a bit of a difference. Hopefully the kids, you know, came away with an extra little bit of passion for curling. Um, and hopefully you know, there's a few of them out there that continue on and, and end up becoming quite competitive. Aztec gave away two Team Botcher signed brooms and Team Botcher along with the rest of the players had plenty of photo opportunities afterwards with the kids to top off an excellent clinic. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. The Aztec Safety Challenge also hosted its kickoff event with an enjoyable evening for sponsors and players alike. Once again, here's our Thomas Wildman. Thanks, Jeff. The upstairs of the Lloyd Curling Center was filled with Olympic and world champions as well as sponsors and fans for a lovely dinner to start off the event. Firstly, we want to thank the sponsors, then we want to welcome the teams, and then we want to include the bigger community. The arts community is important to our city and its character. 
So we want to bring that in and, and do the artist challenge. And the kids are the future of curling here, so they're going to do a demonstration of the mixed doubles. The artist challenge pieces will be up for sale and are going to go towards a great new cause. The artist challenge has been awesome. Um, the artists designed our trophy for the event, so we really wanted to uh, find a way to also give back to them. So by having the artist challenge, um, that's a way for them to show the talents, different talents we have in Lloydminster, and half of the proceeds from the auction of the artists are going to go to a scholarship to an art student uh, for post-secondary. So really great ways to give back to the community through that. And all the effort to put this event together has paid off as the players are very excited to get down to business and curl. They seem very thankful for the ice, they seem very thankful for the facility, the volunteers, the sponsors. They all are excited to be here and they've been most cooperative in terms of making themselves available for people to meet up with them and learn from them. It truly feels like a world-class curling event here at the Lloyd Curling Centre and so there's going to be great curling throughout the entire weekend whether you're watching it here at the Curling Centre or online or at the Lloyd X and so be sure to tune in throughout the entire weekend all the way up until Sunday where the championship games will be played. For Primetime Local News, I'm Thomas Wildman. Time now to have a look at all of the pet pictures you've been sending in to us for our Pets of the Day. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name and have them featured on Pet of the Day. Today I'm here with Jacqueline Weed with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And we're here today to talk about a national mentoring month, which is this month, January. And to start, what do both the mentor and the mentee gain from being in the program? When somebody volunteers as a mentor, they get, um, they get, uh, they learn, they can learn just as many new things as the mentee can. Um, it helps them to fill their time in a fulfilling way. Um, they get to have fun, right? They get to be a kid again. So now that we have some snow, you know, they get to do the winter things that, you know, sledding and skating and that kind of stuff. But it's also just as simple as playing board games or, you know, going for a walk. It's it's building a friendship um, between the two parties. And so the mentee, the benefit is um, it helps to improve their self-esteem and their self-confidence. Um, and it gives them something to look forward to. Somebody who is just their own person to spend time with, an additional positive role model. You recently had a post on Facebook regarding an open call for your board of directors. Can you speak a little more on that? Yeah, so as a part of uh, Mentoring Month, we are governed by a board of directors, um, members from our community who help to um, shape the direction that our agency goes in. Um, and so our board of directors uh, meet 10 months out of the year, once a month. Um, so if anyone is interested, we are looking for some new board members. Um, if anyone is interested, they can just contact our executive director, Brenda Robinson, and she can give them the information about that. I'd like to touch on the statistics of Big Brothers Big Sisters as we enter the new year. How have things been going? So we do have 34 kids on the wait list. Um, we have families that join all the time, so that number fluctuates. We had, I believe, uh, five new matches this year, which is fantastic. Uh, and we had some close as well. Like It's a, it's a cycle, right? You, some open, some close, but it was a really fantastic year. We had a lot of support from the community. We were able to get our in-school mentoring program up and running again, full tilt uh, since COVID. Last year, we kind of slowly started, and this year we were able to get really rolling again. So it's nice to to get those mentoring programs up and running and, and just on a consistent basis. Lastly, what is planned for the rest of the year? So uh, National Pizza Day will be February 9th. So we're just figuring out which restaurants are going to participate. But on that day, any restaurant that's participating will donate $1 from every pizza sold to support our mentoring programs. So we will, as the month progresses, we will let people know which restaurants to go to. Um, they may have a favorite that they like to go to, and hopefully they're one of the ones that are participating. But, you know, you could have pizza for lunch and for supper if you really wanted to. So if you, you know, you could try some new places. Um, and then in April, we will have poutine week again. Um, 
again, same thing, different restaurants, and they donate $3 from every poutine sold to the restaurant. We may have a new fundraiser coming in May, and then uh, we're busy in the summer doing fundraising for different events like bartending and designated driving and that kind of stuff. So uh, all of that helps to support the mentoring programs that we do. So it helps us to have the money to create new matches and to support the matches and the waitlist programs that we do throughout the year. But we've had a great year. We're looking forward to creating more of those impactful, meaningful friendships. Um, and I would encourage anyone, if you're if you're wondering what it's like to be a mentor, you could come and have a chat with us. Um, it's super easy. The process is super easy. And uh, I think it'll be, you won't regret um, making a big difference. That's everything that I had. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this, Jacqueline. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. I'm joined with Lynn Yonkers of the Catholic Social Services of Alberta, talking about Wintergration 2024. Lynn, how's it going? Good, how about you? I'm great, thank you. I know Wintergration 2024 is coming up. What exactly is Wintergration? It's an event that we hold and it's sponsored by Sask Lotteries, Lloydminster Region Health Foundation, IRCC, and of course us, Gateway for Newcomers here at Catholic Social Services, just as an event to help newcomers in the community experience some Canadian winter sports. And it's not only for newcomers, but for the whole community. That's amazing. So how can people get in touch and, and get volunteering? Uh, we will take volunteers. We have some in the community who are already going to volunteer, which is great. So we will have uh, several events. We have skating. So thankfully the Lakeland wrestlers hockey team is going to help us. They're volunteering their time, which is awesome. So they'll be able to help teach those who don't know how to skate some, some basic tips. And then we also have just other volunteers from the community coming top source for sports is volunteering there by giving us some skates to borrow. And so we're very appreciative of that. And then of course, the different ones in the community such as Mount Joy and Table Mountain is also helping because that's our skiing portion of it. So we'll have skating, skiing, snowboarding, curling and then we also have a cultural arts and crafts so the Lloydminster Museum is helping with the cultural aspect of it yeah. which is exciting and the Lloydminster curling team as well they're going to be helping some kids learn about curling. Wow so tons of volunteers going out that's great and so like you said students who have never done this sport or have prior knowledge or experience in the sport they can just jump right in correct? Yeah, it's just a way for them to experience some new winter sports and it's free. So there's no financial commitment to that. And we have people that are experienced who can help teach them and train them. Great. And is this the first year you guys are doing this? This is the second year. So we started it last year just because we saw there's a need. People, not everyone knows how to curl. Not every person knows how to ski, even if you've lived in Lloyd for your entire life. So it's a good way to try something new and see if you like it. Have you guys made any changes from last year to, to this year? Um, we've changed a few of the activities, um, but keeping it basically the same because it was a real hit last year. We had over a hundred people come out to the events. So it was very successful. So we stuck with the basic sports, skating, skiing. We've added snowboarding this year um, and curling. So, and then the cultural piece. What a great initiative. Now is the Catholic social services doing any other events in the new year? Uh, this will be the main push for now because it takes a lot of time. And then you can always stay tuned on our Facebook page to see future events that we'll be doing. So we'll probably also do ones in the spring and summer. 
So there will definitely be more coming up. Perfect. And lastly, when does wintergration start this year? We're starting next week, actually, January 16th and 23rd. We're doing the skating. The skiing will be February 3rd, 10th, and 21st. Curling is March 5th and 12th. And then the cultural one, we're still waiting for sure on the date, but they can sign up as soon as possible because um, space is limited. But if they would like to register, they can reach out to Johanna Reyes, uh, johanna.reyes at cssalberta.ca. And then we have a registration form that's quick and easy to fill out and they can follow up from there. That's so cool. I'm sure this is going to really benefit the community and help all these students out. Thank you so much again, Lynn. Thank you. And that is all we have for you this evening. Thanks for joining us and stay warm. Have a great evening.